I did a review of the 12 volt 35 amp hour universal battery from Harbor Freight. And I talked in there about conditioning batteries, so I thought I'd do a video on how I actually do that. We use these universal batteries for scooter batteries. They're AGM, uh, absorbed glass mat, uh, lead acid batteries. And that is what is recommended for a mobility scooter. In normal use of the scooter, these batteries will go, if not completely dead, close. My, my wife actually likes to run them until they're about dead. I don't like that, but uh, my way of dealing with that is to condition the batteries every three to four months. To condition these batteries, I use two things from Harbor Freight. Syntec battery charger. It has two, two amp trickle charge, 10 amp quick charge, 50 amp emergency engine start. Don't even count on that working. Uh, 50 amps is impossible through this device. So I use this to charge it. To test the battery, I use this battery load tester and there's a video already up about that. Load test the battery, when you first hook it up, it'll give the voltage and that should be around 13.8 volt. To test the battery, you actually flip this switch spring loaded so all you have to do is let go of it. You shouldn't hold that down more than a few seconds. There are coils in here that heat up extremely quickly. Uh, I've actually had them glow red before I figured out I was holding it too long. Doesn't hurt it but I'm not good for it either. So when you put it under load, how far the battery drops under load tells you the condition of the battery. So let's go ahead and hook it up. to the battery and I have 13 and something volts uh, and we'll load test this 13 is where it should go when I load test it it goes down to to weak I can feel just a little bit of heat coming off of these load coils and this is rated at 100 amp, but that's only for a few seconds. So you can see that as I've hit this, uh, the voltage has went down maybe half a volt. It tells me that this thing isn't in the best of condition. Even though it says it's 13 volts, when I put it under load, it, it's only going to put out 10 volts. So this battery is weak. So what do I do about that? So when a battery comes in and it's weak, the first thing I want to do is set this to quick charge, the, the blue, AGM because that's the type of battery I have. The great thing I like about this is it's plugged in and turned on, but it's not live. Until it senses a voltage on the terminals, it won't supply power to the terminals. I know that sounds kind of weird, but it actually works out really well because otherwise you can put these together and have an accident without even realizing it. What I want to do is hook up red to red, black to black and that's starting to charge. So that's 10 amp. This says it's fully charged. We know from the load tester that while it might be fully charged, it doesn't provide the optimal output of power. So what I'll do is unhook this, switch it to 2 amp, and put it back on. Now what this will do is it'll start a trickle charge. Trickle charge will sit there until it senses that the battery is fully charged, and then it'll that light will turn green and it'll turn off. Sometimes that takes overnight I have a feeling that if you take a battery like this to a parts store and they keep it overnight, this is exactly what they're doing. They're doing a quick charge. When the quick charge is finished, they're going to go to a triple charge. So as you can see, it's almost full. Messing around with the load tester, I probably discharged it a little bit. The trickle charge finishes, and that'll be this will be green when it finishes. If it finishes and I do the load test and it still shows weak, then I've got to run the battery down and repeat this cycle. You can find some way to discharge it, hook something electric up to it and just let it run. That has a good chance of, her, of damaging the battery. I would prefer that I give this to my wife when she's going on a short trip and she use it, run it down about halfway maybe. I'm hoping that at, through cycling this the battery becomes strong again. This is probably the second time I've went through this process with it. Her mobility scooter uses batteries in pairs to make a 24 volt system. If you have a strong battery 
and weak battery, the strength of the system will be the weak battery. Even though you have a stronger battery, it will not compensate for this battery. So we'll let that charge. So the light finally turned green. So I'll take them off to reset this, put it right back on. I'd say there's something wrong with this battery if it didn't immediately go back to green. Yeah, let's do a test. Okay, so we've got 13 volts. Let's and I'll do the load test. See how it went to weak. My guess is there's something wrong with this battery. Okay, I tested the last battery and the charger said it was good. The battery load tester said it was weak. That battery, while it's good and will work, it has a reduced cycle length. So when my wife takes it out in her scooter, she will get, you know, four miles instead of six and if it wasn't for the load tester I wouldn't know that and that's why a load tester is so important when conditioning batteries so what I'm going to do I've got another battery that I think is good so I'm going to test this battery and then charge it and we'll see what a good battery looks like okay so we have 13 and a half volts roughly that's a good sign because a battery should be 13.8 volts so I'll test it, and it's right on the edge of being weak. So it's dropping about 3 volts. So it's right on the edge of being weak. So let's take the tester off. Okay, we're going to do the 10 amp quick charge. So we'll let that run. It should work its way up fair. Ah, so it took like a minute. So I'll take off one of the terminals, switch it to trickle charge, and put it back on. Now we'll see how long that goes. I think that was a fresh cycled battery, so I don't think this will take very long. Okay, the Quick charge is finished, so let's test it. So the meter go went up just a little. Looks like it might be closer to 13.8, which is nominal for these types of batteries. So let's do the load test. And it's right on the edge of weak, and if I keep doing this, it'll creep down into the weak. That's getting very hot, so it's pulling a lot of amps out of that battery. Okay, so this is why you need a load tester, and that's part of your battery conditioning. Charging it does charge the battery. It tells you it's full, but when you do this, it under load tells you that it's not going to perform quite as well. Now this battery isn't bad. The meter says weak, and that is correct. If I use this battery, I'm not going to get as long a service out of it as I could. If I start using this, it's going to be a lot quicker to run down than a battery that's in perfect shape. So that's why you need a battery tester. And when it comes into the bad range, that's a sign you need to replace the battery. Don't trust that battery to do anything. If you're going to have lead acid batteries, you need a reliable way to charge it and you need a reliable way of telling you how good the battery is. Before we got the load tester, we wondered how long it would be and then we got out and well, using a battery and we'd realized that it wasn't correct. We'd realize that something was wrong with the battery and the capacity was down. When you're actually using a battery away from the house, not a good time to realize there's something wrong with the battery.
I highly recommend that if you got if you have lead acid batteries that you go to this type of a conditioning system so you not only will it charge more efficiently it will tell you what to expect from your batteries thanks for watching